Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday. It's the 11th of July, 2022. I hope you had a good and safe weekend. I hope that you and your family are healthy and safe on this Monday. Happy Monday to you. Um, blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders trying to save lives on a daily basis. Those that pick up garbage for us and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women trying to help deliver and rescue the children and teenagers that are the victims of child molestation and double curses on the perpetrators, the perverts, and the profiteers who traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless, nearly 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States of America with no home and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. This past weekend, the Knicks played two basketball games. <clears throat> they played two summer league games. In both games, Quentin Grimes was the high scorer. In both games, the Knicks progressively looked better. In both games, they held the opponents for under 90 points. I think they're averaging holding the opponents to under 80 points. Uh, for sure, they had held the, the first one on Friday to 88 points. I think that was the Golden State Warriors. And then uh, yesterday, they held... Uh, they destroyed the, the Chicago Bulls summer league team, holding them to about 69 points while scoring 101 on each uh, each time. Now, the key thing here, a couple things, things that I've been talking about, we've been talking about on this channel for a minute now. <clears throat> I thought that Jericho Sims, Miles McBride, and of course, the aforementioned Quentin Grimes were going to play very well in the summer league, and they have. Um, the reason being because, first of all, they're all very talented basketball players. They come through Tom Thibodeau's defensive system this past season. Whatever you think about Tom Thibodeau, he has his thorns. There's no doubt about it. But there's one thing for sure. The players that play under him work very hard. They learn to work very hard. They learn how to play defense. This is the key thing that we were missing last year with the veterans that we acquired in Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier, and, of course, he always hurt Nerlens Noel. We did not have the same level of defense we had when Reggie Bullock and Alfred Payton were the starting backcourt. And so we suffered last year. Offensively, Tom Thibodeau has never been a genius. He ran, he runs his pick and rolls and he runs the triangle offense, though he doesn't call it that. That's generally what he runs. And last year, we were totally dependent uh, uh, too often on one-on-one -on -one basketball, namely Julius Randle. Uh, also, R.J. Barrett, just one-on-one -on -one basketball in general. Ball wasn't moving very well, especially in the first unit, and it showed. We lost about five games last year where we could have won based strictly on misuse of personnel. Now, this particular summer league, though, we had those three players particularly showing out. Yesterday, Miles McBride controlled the offense. He ran it efficiently. He had 14 or 15 points, efficient points. He had six or seven assists, no turnovers, three steals. No, he had six assists, no turnovers, three steals, three rebounds, plus 31. Okay, which is what you get. You got last year from Miles McBride. But this year he's playing in the summer league. He's given the keys and he's playing 30 minutes a game. And this is what you're getting from him. Uh, people want to criticize whether he's getting into the paint or not. It's stupid. The thing about your point guard is he has to be effective. He has to help your team win. Miles McBride did that on both sides of the floor. He looked like a pro among people trying to become pros. Same with Quentin Grimes. Very, very polished uh, during these last two games. He looked like he's he's overmatching whoever is guarding him because he is. <laughs> he is a professional level shooter. He's already proven that. And um, I'm expecting him to be our starting two guard uh, coming into training camp. Um, and I don't even know <clears throat> at this point how much it makes sense to continue to play him in the summer league, lest he gets hurt He's if he's going to be your starting two guard. So I am looking for him maybe to play one more game and then maybe they sit him down because, you know, there's no there's no need for him to continue uh, to, to waste time uh, playing in the summer league. Jericho Sims, of course, looks again like a man among boys uh, in the summer league on the boards. He's also trying, um, not as successfully, but at least he's trying to put the ball on the floor a lot and use athleticism to get to the hole to start a break. He's been doing, he had like five or six turnovers 
Um, so he's, but this is the atmosphere you want to do that in. You want to try to learn in the summer league. You want to push that. And so he's doing a good job. Um, his athleticism, as we already know, is otherworldly. He came out of Texas with that. Um, but he is definitely our, um, third string center. He's our third string center behind Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein. And I told y'all before, we're all set at the five right now. We're all set at the five for the season. It's a long season. Jericho is going to get minutes. Um, and, and so it's just, a, you know, because it is an 82 game season. He's going to get some minutes. OK, so we're pretty we're set at the five. And as far as I'm concerned, we're set at the two as well. Um, there's so many combinations that Tom Thibodeau can use at his disposal. Uh, we mentioned Quentin Grimes. You also have Cam Reddish. You have RJ that could also play the two. Cam and RJ can play the wing. In fact, Cam can play the two to three or the small ball four. And speaking of fours, we know that we have Obi Toppin as well as Julius Randle. Now, Julius Randle, it looks to me that he's going to be on this roster come September, come training camp. Uh, he looked in tremendous shape. But as we always been saying, with Julius, is not what kind of shape he's in necessarily. It's what is in his head. Is he ready to become the second or third option? Jalen Brunson is given the keys to this team. End of story. His father is an assistant coach. They're not going to put up Jalen Brunson. If you go back and look at him from high school, okay, from 14 years old to now, he's been a leader. He's the leader. When he steps on the floor, he is the presumed guy with the keys, putting everybody in their position. He's been that way. Even on Dallas Mavericks, when Luka was not playing and he's playing, he makes sure you know he's running things. OK, so he's not going to take a back seat to Julius Randle or R.J. Barrett or anybody. He's going to run the offense. He is going to be the guy that makes this cup go. He's going to be the straw that stirs this drink, period. End of story. So that being the case, how will Julius Randle react to that? OK, it's not like what I'm telling you right now is unknown to Julius Randle. He knows what I just said. OK, so does R.J. Barrett. They both know that. In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion. This is just me. That Julius embraces this. That he will embrace giving the keys to Brunson. That he will embrace letting Brunson handle the orchestration of the offense. I think he's going to embrace that. It takes pressure off of him. Okay? It takes pressure off of him. And so... um, with, with Grimes starting next to Brunson, you're going to have a very strong defensive unit. Um, you're going to play New York Knicks style defense and you're going to have a very strong defensive unit. I suspect again that we're going to be top, the Knicks will be top 10 or better in the NBA overall on the defensive side of the basketball. Um, as usual, I want y'all to understand it's going to be a slow start always with defensive teams. You're going to start slow. It's not going to be like, you know, <laughs> Golden State Warriors coming out the gate, but they're going to be defensive oriented. That's it's going to be low scoring at first, and you're going to see some defensive tough games. Um, they're going to grind out some games that they would have lost last year. That's what you're going to see coming into the beginning of this season. The question marks now. Things that also let's start with the summer league. Um, Gene Montero, he looked solid. He looked solid um, at this point. Not solid enough to make the roster. But I'm wondering if it was solid enough to be, uh, they get a two way contract. Right now, the Knicks have on two way contracts. They have, um, uh, not Jericho Sims. They have on two way contracts, uh, Trevor Keels out of Duke and, um, Farron Hunt. They're on the two way contract right now. You only allow two. Now, Montero could be on the G League roster and not be on a two way deal. OK, so so let's remember that he you still need a team on the Westchester Knicks. He could be on the G League roster and just simply not be on a two on a two way contract. And and I can see that possibly happening. A lot of people are asking for him to get a two way deal. But what you must remember with a two way deal is a two way player can sometimes play in the regular roster. Let me tell you something right now. Montero would not be in the rotation at all. The Knicks just renounced Ryan Archidiacomo, a more seasoned pro. 
and still a young man uh, from Montero. But I believe Montero will be on the Westchester Knicks roster to continue his development. He'll get a, probably a G League contract and he'll play on that roster if he wants to. Um, I think he'll get that. So for the Montero fans out there, I just want you all to understand that they're not going to create. I mean, say Farron Hunt going to be on the 15 man roster just to get G Montero a two way deal because two way implies that he's going to be on the bench for some up to 50 games with the Knicks. That's not going to happen this year. Just trying to be realistic with y'all. It's not going to happen this year. Okay. But Farron Hunt could very well, you know, make the 15 man roster or they could just exercise him as a G League player that's on a two way and come up for up to 50 games into the regular rotation roster. Same with Keels. And so that's what G League contracts, the two-way contracts, do for you. They allow you to bring a player up to play with the regular team uh, while still maintaining development in the G League. So not, but not, there's only two of those, as I mentioned. So Montero probably is trying out for a G League contract with the Knicks or a two-way contract on another team. That's probably what he's doing. He looked very solid. The young man looked solid out there. Um, you know, he made rookie mistakes, as you would expect. There's nothing, un, you know, that you don't expect. He played much more better in terms of effort on defense um, than he had been. So that's really good. So uh, as far as Montero, my expectation is that he would be either on the roster in a G League contract with the Westchester Knicks from his Exhibit 10A contract, which means what you might see is this. He's going to get waived in October or September. He'll get waived, but that doesn't mean he won't be back on the Westchester Knicks. He'll get waived from his G League deal, and then he'll probably sign a deal somewhere, either, again, on the Westchester Knicks G League affiliate or on another team. And so that's what I'm thinking of Montero. Um, as far as Keels, Keels, um, as I, I told you all when he was drafted, he's got a lot of work to do. Some of y'all are already putting him in the rotation. Some of y'all are thinking he's going to be on the team. He's not. He's going to be in G League. He, 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 I told you, he has trouble staying in front of NBA level players. Okay. He's got the body. He's a strong young man, but, um, he is not ready, uh, to, to, to play in the NBA, uh, at this time. He's still only 18 years old. And from what they were saying yesterday, he won't be 19 years old until August. So he's a young kid, right? So he also is going to be uh, developed. And so, you know, I don't, I don't think he's going to be around this year at all. You, you're, you're not going to see him play on the Knicks regular team at all, but he's going to be getting developed. And if he can develop properly, develop his body, uh, develop some skills in terms of staying in front, And of course, you know, he shot the ball horribly. Uh, but again, this is 18 year old kid, you know, so he's, you know, he's not, he wasn't a great shooter at Duke, but it's just development. So you got to give him time. I like his attitude. His attitude is the best thing about him right now, you know, so I think if he can continue to develop in the G League, you might see him in two seasons. You know, hopefully he develops really well this year, maybe the end of the year. You know, if the Knicks are a playoff team, you won't see him. But if they're not, you might see him at the end of the season. And then you hopefully he continues his development. As far as Hunt, Hunt was trying really hard. He's trying really hard um, to make the regular roster. You can just see the effort that he's giving. Uh, He's a defensive player. And so he's going to show what he naturally is. He did not shoot the ball well yesterday, but he was never a great shooter. He was never a great shooter. He's got to develop a shot. But right now on the Knicks, You want to make sure you're playing defense, right? And he does that. He hustles and he plays defense. He only scored five points. Um, He was zero of two from the three-point range, one of four from the field. So he didn't shoot the ball a whole lot, but he did. If you watch the game, he showed the hustle and he showed the defense. And that's what you want. So again, with him, he's going to get development. He's a little older. I think he's 23. He's going to get development in the G League. Okay, and so he may, you may see him come up to the roster a couple of times. He's six eight, you know. He's a front court player, and so you, again, for, just for that hustle, that junkyard dog mentality, you might see him come up a couple of times in the season. But don't expect him to play much, if at all. You know, if the Knicks are in a playoff run, you won't see him play at all. So 
Um, but I liked what I saw from him in terms of the hustle and the defense. Again, he just has to develop a little bit offensively. He don't have to be a superstar, but he has to develop a reliable shot. Okay. He has to develop a reliable shot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we saw now. Also, um, the question is, what are we going to do with Evan Fournier? I've been, I, this past week, yesterday, I was on Nick of Time with Ryan G and, I didn't know that Twitter was blowing up with this controversy between who should start Cam or Grimes. Um, I don't think that's a big issue as people making it out to be. I think people are making up too much <laughs> into this. But the real issue to me is who you going to keep, Cam or Evan Fournier? See, there's no question they're keeping Grimes. Okay. And I think he probably will start just before the fit, but. Are they keeping Cam or Evan Fournier? Because if you keep both of them, somebody's not going to play. Think about it. Let's just, let's look at your starting five. Jalen Brunson at the point. Let's say Cam, uh, Grant, uh, uh, Quentin Grimes at your two spot. RJ Barrett at your three. Mitchell Robinson is your five. And then you have Julius Randle. Okay. Mob Deep now. Emmanuel Quickly. Obi Toppin. Now, who you going with? Cam or Evan? Okay, who are you doing? And is, if RQ is going to be an off guard, you're going to play Deuce at the point. Or you're going to play RQ at the point and you still have a decision to make. And then, of course, you got Isaiah Hartenstein at the five. So you got Hartenstein, OB, IQ for sure, right? Now, you might want to play Evan and Cam together. I don't know. So that's the real question. What are they going to do with Evan Fournier? I thought that possibly he was going to be involved in the sign and trade with Dallas. But the Don said, no, he's not, he's not giving them to Dallas. So I don't know what they're going to do. Okay. I don't know what they're going to do with Evan Fournier or Cam. I want Cam to play. And the reason is couple, couple fold. Number one, I believe raw Hebrew believes that Cam Reddish has the most natural gift and talent as far as athletic basketball ability than anybody on the Knicks, even Julius Randle. He has that kind of talent. Now, that's number one. Number two, this is a contract year for him. He, the talent level and the age, like he's going to be like 23, I think. The talent level and the age will dictate that no matter what happens on the Knicks, if he doesn't get hurt, another team is going to give him a chance. Like, Josh Jefferson comes to mind. Drafted fourth overall by Phoenix. Didn't work out. Went to Memphis. Now he's in Detroit. He's going to keep, because of his age, being so young and being so talented, for a few years, he's going to just, if he's not hurt, he's going to be given chances because it, he could pop at any time. You just don't know. Well, that's Cam Reddish. So now this year, Cam has an opportunity to say, okay, he can pop and make a $20 million, $15 million deal next year. Or he's going to be like Jefferson, Josh Jeff Jackson, I'm sorry, Josh Jackson, and be a journeyman getting four, three, four, five million and trying to make a roster and see if he could pop that way. And this is the year that that is determined. And so I, I want to see, and not only that, um, Cam, unlike Fournier, I mean, Fournier's a pure shooter, probably the best shooter on the Knicks. Um, not a great defender, obviously high IQ basketball player. Definitely. Uh, we know he can score. We see he dropped 40 a couple of times last year. So we know he could do that. He also gave up a lot of points. But with Cam, you can slot Cam in at the two, the three, or the four. He can play all of those positions on the floor. Okay. And guard all of those positions on the floor. Okay. And, and again, he's young. He fits the timeline. So there's a decision that still has to be made before training camp. I don't know which way Leon Rose is going to go. And he kept, cause he keeps his cards close to the vest as he should. So, but we're going to find out, but I do say there's another move that needs to be made. It's either going to be Evan Fournier or Cam Reddish. Okay. That's what you're going to get. Right. And so with, with that type of situation, we got to see. And then of course, we're still talking about the last guy I want to talk about, Derek Rose. Derek Rose is going to be 34 in October. Age catches up to everybody. Okay, there's some exceptions, 
but it catches up to everybody. And how you start to see it is you start to see nagging injuries keep guys out the lineup. The year before last, it was something. Last year, it was something else with Derrick Rowe. Okay. And so you're going to see that start to creep up more. Okay. The more minutes he gets, the higher the probability of him getting hurt. Okay. So you got to limit his minutes. He's getting $14 million. $14 million for a guy you really can't play more than 15 minutes a game. Think about that. He's getting $14 million. And you really can't play him more than 15 minutes a game without him getting hurt. Okay, why why am I mentioning that? He is more suited to a more established playoff team that can really just use him for the 15 minutes a game and use the expiring deal. Okay, he's more suited to that. To the young Knicks, he's a veteran presence. And yes, some of you brought that up. We need a vet presence. But right now, y'all have to understand, Julius Randle's a veteran. Although Mitchell Robinson is young, he's a veteran. So is Jalen Brunson. So is R.J. Barrett, even at 22. This is his fourth season. <clears throat> These guys are not just young guys with green wet behind the ears anymore. These are veterans too. Okay? So, yes, it'd be nice to have a veteran, but for $14 million and you got guards already? That's chomping at the bit for minutes? I don't know. So we're going to see how that plays out. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking at Evan Fournier and I'm looking at Derrick Rose and I'm wondering which one, what move next. And we're going to find out. We're going to find out over the course of the summer. We're going to find out. Okay. Um, I believe one of the reasons you're seeing, this is what you see. Look at the at who's at the summer league. James Dolan is at the summer league. The owner. Leon Rose is there. World Wide West is there. Allen Houston is there. Walt Perrin is there. They're all there. Why are they at the summer league? Let me tell you why. Because they know they have decisions to make. The Jericho Sims is not a decision they need to worry about. He's your third string um, center. So that's not what they're looking at. No, no, no. They got to decide, is Deuce McBride going to get more minutes? Is, is Quentin Grimes going to start? That's what they're looking at. Okay? That's what they're there for. And everybody's there. Emmanuel Quickly is there. Obi Toppin is there. Julius Randle is there. Everybody's there. And these are the decisions that need to be made. What's going to happen with Evan Fournier? Do you still want Derrick Rose? They got to find out. Okay? They got to find out. And so uh, it's going to be interesting. So the Knicks play tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, I think they're playing Portland tonight. Portland drafted Shaden Sharp. Shaden Sharp's already hurt. Dyson Daniels is already hurt. Jaden Ivory's already hurt. Did y'all notice that? How would y'all feel now if we drafted any of these guys and they're hurt in Summer League? Like I said, I'm expecting them to sit Quentin Grimes. Maybe he plays tonight, but I don't want to mess around with a guy that's probably our starting two guard. And so, you know, he plays tonight. He goes off against Portland and then, you know, you sit him. And then, you know, you go from there. You, you play, you keep playing Deuce. See how comfortable he is running the offense, which he looked very comfortable running the offense yesterday. Very efficient on both sides of the basketball. And so if he continues that, you know what you got now. Okay. He's running 30 minutes a night. What did he play last? He played 24 minutes yesterday. Six of eight from the field. Two of four from the three point line. Three rebounds. Six assists. Three steals. One turnover. Plus 31, 14 points. You can't get more efficient than that. <laughs> Very efficient. Okay. And so, um, yeah, they, if they, they continue to see what they have with him, that's when you might see a Derrick Rose move. If they continue to, to see what they have with Quentin, that's when you might see an Evan Fournier move because that's what they're looking at right now. You know, who, who they should keep and who, what they're going to do with these kids. Leon has already stated on two different occasions both in his interview with Mike Bream and then in the statement he issued uh, after the draft, he's committed to the youth. He's committed to the development program. So that's why they're looking at these kids so hard. Okay. He's already shipped out Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks and Kemba Walker. He sent them out already. Okay. 
he's committed to these young kids. So we're going to see. He's assigned Mitchell Robinson 60 million. Some some of y'all, some people I had talking about 14 million years too much for Mitchell Robinson, which I thought was ridiculous. He's worth every bit of the 60 million. And he's still got a lot of upside. Apparently, Leon agrees. So he signed Mitchell Robinson. He brings in Hartenstein as a backup. He has Jericho Sims backing up them two. That said, as I mentioned, they're out there seeing. Is Quentin Grimes are starting to? Do we need Derek uh, Rose? Or, or can, can Deuce step into that backup role? That's what they're looking at. We're going to see. Y'all know how I feel about it. Give me Q-Dog and, and Deuce all day. Okay, right now. Period. <laughs> and let's roll. But I'm very excited uh, for our Knicks. Uh, from from the front office, see, the fr- one last thing. The front office of any NBA team is how you start to build a long-term sustainable win. It's with the front office. I'm very confident in our front office. From all the men that I mentioned, you know, plus James Dolan allowing them to do their thing and not interfering. That's what you're seeing. And this is the first time since Dolan has been the active owner that you've seen this, that he's just hands off. He's letting the crew that he picked do their thing and not interfering. That's a big time thing, especially when you got a crew that knows what the hell they're doing. Like Leon Rose, Walt Perrin, Brock Eiler, and the, and Scott Perry in them. See? So this is good. That's where you start to build a winner. If you can just keep that crew together in the brain trust, you're going to always be in it. You're going to always be. That's what all the great organizations have. A brain trust that's been together, that's, that's, that's on the same page. That's what the kinks, the Knicks are working out right now. The only issue, as we all know, is Tom Thibodeau. Okay. And so I'm telling you all right now, we're going to find out between now and January. If he's not on board with the program by January, he will be out. If he is, and I hope he is, and the reason I hope he is, because if you could get Tibbs on board and he can focus on your deuces, your IQs, your OBs, your, you know, if he could focus on them like he focused on his vets, we're going to be in good shape. Okay. We're going to be in good shape. Like I said, we would have won five more games last year if he didn't falsely believe that Alec Burks was his best option at the point. We'd have won five more games last year just by putting Emmanuel quickly in that spot. Okay, so we'll see what happens, but I'm very confident in how we're rolling. You see Tom Thibodeau sitting next to Scott Perry, sitting next to Leon Rose, sitting next to the Listen, don't think that they just doing that. Just like they didn't just show up at that Dallas playoff game when they all showed up there. They were letting Dallas know we can raise sign your point guard. <laughs> and they ain't have to say anything. It was like in The Godfather. When Michael Corleone was on trial and Frank Pantangeles was testifying against him, all, all, um, Don had to do was show Pantangeles' brother in the courtroom. He didn't have to say anything. Pantangeles' brother was just sitting there. Pantangeles saw him, changed the whole dynamic, and Michael got off. That was Godfather too. And so that's the same thing. All they had to do was show up at the game. They ain't say anything. They ain't meet with him. And that let everybody know what was going on. We're taking great, we're taking Jalen Brunson. Period. They already knew that. And I like how they doing business. So we in good shape, y'all. I'm just, you know, continuing to wait and see on the decisions they still have to make going into training camp. And so we'll know uh, by September by training camp. We'll, we'll have a very clear idea what's going on. Meantime, please enjoy your Monday. Be safe out there. Shalom.